You know, Rick Rude uh, was involved in another match, too. Uh, Rick was involved in a match against Dutch Mantel right in the center of the ring. Some bad blood between the two of them uh, going back for a number of weeks, and they were uh, facing each other one against one in the center of the ring. We have some highlights of what happened in that match. Watch closely. Here's what happened. And there it was, Dutch. You saw the count right there on okay, the Okay, I'm uh, the standing replay. here watching this, and I'm not a very happy man today. Now, you know, it's becoming increasingly difficult to go to the ring to wrestle Rick Rude, and he's got a woman and a half out there with him every time I go out there. He's got Jimmy Hart, which is a half a woman, half a man, and he's got Angel. Now, you can't wrestle that way, but I'll tell you what, Angel, now, you're supposed to be a valet. You're not supposed to be a wrestler. You're supposed to really go to the ring, get your ravishing one's robe, and take it back to the dressing room, and just stand out there and watch your lover boy do what he does best. Well, Angel, I don't think you've been following directions because you've been getting involved. Now, last Monday night, you hit me. You've been hit with a high heel shoe. No, but I can imagine. Well, I've you, been hit yeah. one. Not only has she hit me one, I've been hit one before by a lady I had a little trouble with. But I'm going to tell you, it hurts, and it distracts you. Now, I'm going to say one thing. I got hit with it three times. Now, you can't concentrate on a match when you keep somebody keeps popping you, popping you, popping. Now, I got sick and tired of it. Now, this past week... I heard of a woman. Now, I've also found out you can't hit a woman unless people look at you funny. And if I hit Angel, I'd knock her into next week. But I found a woman that beats up other women for a living. And you people are going to see a first in Memphis. You're going to see that Angel step into that ring in the role of a wrestler. And I'm going to have as my partner the one of the roughest, the toughest, the raunchiest, woman I could find, and her name is Evelyn Stevens. And I called her on the phone, and I asked her, I give her a proposal, would she be my partner? And she readily agreed. And she told me, she says, Dutch, if that angel comes within 10 feet of me, I'll knock her lights out, and that's exactly what I want her to do. So Monday night, I'm gonna say one thing, Rude. You bring the little valet angel down there, and you climb in the ring with me and my partner that I personally recruited, Evelyn Stevens, and we're gonna teach Angel we're going to introduce her to the violent world of professional wrestling. That happens Monday night. All right. Thanks, Dutch. Dutch Mantel, Evelyn Stevens will be going against Rick Rude. And Angel will be in the ring against him. There's more to come on championship wrestling, including the big eight-man match. We'll be back in just a moment. Uh, rooted angel. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky, come here, Ricky. Look at this right here, man. You know, if you pick up any magazine on any wrestling newsstand, who are you going to see? Jimmy Hart, Angel, and Rick Rude, baby, right there, live and in person. You know, Dutch said the raunchiest woman, the only raunchiest woman he can find would be that ugly wife of his, Rick. What are you and Angel going to do to him, baby? You know what? Dutch Van Tell, he can come out here and he can make all the excuses in the world. But the truth is, at the end of the match, I stuck the man's shoulders to the ring, one, two, three. And now he talks about bringing in some fat hillbilly swamp sow, <laughs> some filthy pig that's gonna lay her filthy hands on Angel. Dutch, you have another thing coming, baby. When you're in that wrestling ring, it's fair game, you know that? It's fair game for that, what is that pig's name, Evelyn? It's fair game for her, it's fair game for you. Whoever's in that ring, Dutch, is going to go down. I don't care if it's that swamp saw you bring with you. I don't care if it's you. Bring your aunts, bring your uncles, bring your whole family tree, Dutch Mantel. I'll pull it out by the roots, you punk. <laughs> Dutch, you are jealous. Look at the magazine coverage. You know, everybody's saying that Jimmy Hart corrupted Rick Root. Jimmy Hart corrupted the angel. But well, let me tell you something, baby. Like I said, I know who it is. That's that big, fat, ugly wife of his. But bring her on down because Rick Root is the greatest athlete in the world today. And Angel is the loveliest valet in the world, period. Right, baby? Jimmy Hart, Rick Root, and Angel. Angel is going to be in the ring for that match as uh, Evelyn Jones will be there with Dutch Mantel. Something happened, it started on championship wrestling as uh, the fabulous ones, uh, Tommy Rich and Eddie Gilbert, were going against the PYT Express. Let me let you take a look at uh, what happened, and this thing just kind of turned into a free-for-all. In there, Hart in the middle of the ring. Uh, Stagger Lee is holding Tommy Rich. Hart beating on him. Eddie Gilbert working on Norvell down on the floor. Hart leaps off the apron. But Eddie nailed it. Look out. Over in 
the crowd, Eddie. Going back after Norvell down here on the floor. Back into the crowd. Well, as you can see, they left the ring and they were in the crowd and just all over the studio here, but that wasn't the end of it. They had a match scheduled in Nashville, Tennessee at the Sports Arena, and take a look at some of the action from that. man get in. That's Norvell Austin. He's the bigger of the PYT Express. He is using that right fist on the head of Tommy Ritz. Tommy reaching for the tag. He's still three feet away from him, though. Oh, the Coco Butt. Tommy over to the corner. The tag made on Eddie Gilbert. Eddie comes in, right hand flying, and down to the mat goes Norvell Austin. Eddie not letting up. Stagger Lee jumps in there. He turned just in time. Eddie saw him coming and kneeled in with the right foot. Norvell off the rope. Set him up for Tommy Rich. Tommy round behind him. Possible sleeper hole. Back out, Stagger Lee climbing the rope. Wrapping what appears to be a chain around his fist, and he smacks Tommy in the top of the head with that chain it looked like wrapped around his right hand. Oh, Stagger Lee, feeling good about it. PYP Express. Feel like they're looking at a victory right now as they have the fabulous ones in trouble. certainly played a part in this one. Chains wrapped around the fist of both of the BYT Express. At various times in the match, Tommy able to get the tag. Here is Eddie Gilbert. He's been watching all of this from outside on the apron. Now he gets the tag. He's the legal man in the ring. He's going after the chain. Stagger Lee has. There goes Norvell. Out of the ring. Down onto the floor. Tommy Rich coming after into the ring post goes Norvell Austin. Meanwhile, Eddie's got the chain. He wrapped it around that right fist and Neil Stagger Lee down on the floor. Tommy still going for Norvell. He's got him cut. He nails him with a chair. That's not going to do him any good. And Austin going at each other. Look out. Headed for the exit. Into those doors. And see what's going on too well. You have a better view than we do. Saw the referee, Ron Sexton, going back that way to try to get him apart. No, they're still battling, still going at each other. In the PYT Express. Norvell Austin and Stagger Lee against the fabulous ones, Tommy Rich and Eddie Gilbert. And it has come to a real street fight. Rich and Austin going at each other. Stagger Lee and Eddie Gilbert going at each other. They're all down on the floor back there. Coco Ware head of the concrete wall the door bounces open and bounces back shut, throws it right back into the hand of Tommy Rick. Door was not through a door back there. 
VIP uh, is in the dressing room. Knocked in there by, by Eddie Gilbert. That's Stagger Lee back to the door. There's, there's Norvell Austin coming out of the dressing room. And Austin and Eddie Gilbert going at it again. Tommy Rich and Coco Webb back in the game. All four of them right by the uh, VIP dressing room. VIP Express, I think they're both inside there, at least one of them. Boy, well, you saw it right there, the action from the ring to the crowd to the exit to the concession stand to the dressing room. Here they come, Jimmy Hart and the PYT Whoa, Express. The greatest team in the history of professional wrestling. Pretty young and tough, baby. Here they are. Woo! Norvell Austin. Let me tell you one thing. Tom and Rich and Eddie Gilbert is always talking about they want us. They want to do this and they want to do that to us. Well, let me tell you one thing. They must not want us too bad because everywhere we done been, Mr. Dave Brown, every time that we done wrestled these chumps in, we done beat them, baby, and we done got blood from them and everything else. And they don't want us too bad because you see us here in living color, mind you. We in living color. Where's Look at your little sheet right here. Your so sheet you see their name down here in the well? Yeah. Because the they knew we was going to be here, Dave Where Brown. That's the reason why they are boarding us. They don't want to be here because they could be if they wanted to be, but they still in the PYT, the baddest team in this whole world. What's wrong with them, Dave? Where are they at? Where is uh, Tommy Rich and Eddie Gilbert? Right. I think that question just got answered here. Tommy Rich and uh, Eddie Gilbert. Come on, guys. They talk about somebody running. Right here we are. We easy to find, brother. You talk about crazy times. It's going to be crazy times when we get a hold of you. Okay, we don't care anymore. If we have to go outside, if we have to get chairs, if we have to use anything to get down with these guys, we're going to get them. I'm tired of messing with these guys everywhere we go. We have to watch their backs, so they better get ready to watch theirs. It doesn't matter if it's a mall, if it's down, downtown, a service station, anywhere. We're asking these guys, and we're going to show them what we can do. Okay, Eddie. Eddie and Tommy out here. The, the question had just been asked by the PYT, where are they? Well, there they are. Stagger Lee. Uh, Still in the area, Hart and Norvell trying to get him out of there. There's Tommy Rich uh, standing there with that, uh, that wooden stool. And PYT and Hart leaving the area right now. Stagger with a comment, uh, why don't you put that thing down? And so Tommy immediately dropped it, but PYT and uh, Jimmy Hart have left. Any kind of match they want anytime, anywhere, any place. Hart, we ain't running from nobody, brother. We're here to stay. So you bring the PYT on, and we'll take care of them. Thumbs up, Daddy. That's it, Daddy. He said it all. That's what we're. It's a fight from here on. The war has just started. All right. The fabulous ones: Tommy Rich, Eddie Gilbert. Mark my words. Some kind of action coming up as a result of all of that. We're going to be back. More of Championship Wrestling in just a moment. highlights of that match from the Coliseum last week. Eddie slammed and Thomas Marlin down. Look out. Thomas rips his shirt off. He blasts Jimmy Hart again. I told you this guy can punch. Hart knocked down a third time. Baker kicked out of there by Law. All right, well, you saw what uh, what happened there. The special referee, Thomas Marlin, and uh, with Jimmy Hart and uh, everything going on as Humongous was uh, sent into all of that. Here comes Hart and Humongous right now, and there's something, word has been, uh, has been sent. <laughs> Jimmy? Woo, I feel good. The greatest day of my life, baby. Look at my big man here, Humongous. Wait, wait a minute. Before you go any, any further, word has been sent to me by promoter Eddie Marlin. You sent Humongous into the ring in the highlights uh, in, in that match, and everyone saw it. 
New rule has been in effect about a week, a $1,000 fine. The promoter says you have not paid the fine, and I am instructed if you do not pay the fine, you must leave the television area. If I don't pay the fine, then I'm going to have to leave, right? That's exactly well, I'll right. I'll tell you what you do for me right now, baby. I want you to put out your little hand right here because I'll tell you what, I've got $1,000 right here, and I will pay Humongous' his fine because, you see, it was the greatest night of my life, baby. And when something is great to Jimmy Hart, it's worth money. You see, anytime I can see Jerry Lawler looking up at those lights, baby, it's worth it to me. So I'll tell you what I've got right here. I've got 1000 bucks right here. And uh, I'll tell you, here we go, right here. I want you to put your little hand out right here, and you can count it later on, but I'm sure it's there. You got some 50s in there, $100 bills in there, 20s, but it's $1,000. Why don't you put it in your little pocket and keep it for Jimmy Hart? Because like I said, baby, Eddie Mullen, if that's all you care about is money, why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you take that money and buy your old dead mother something for Mother's Day? How do you like that, Pop? Now, I want to, this is my greatest, th this is a great night for me, but right now, I want to bring somebody else in to join it. Night Hart, come here, baby. Oakland Raiders, baby, my champion, my vice president of the first family, my hero, my bodyguard. What a great night it was. Jim How Knight exciting Hart. it was. So you can take $1,000 from Jimmy Hart anytime you want to take it, baby, because like I said, baby, it was worth it. That'll be Woo! delivered to the promoter. Thank you, pal. You know something, Jimmy? In Memphis last week, I was very, very disheartened and humiliated. <laughs> Shut up! Because when you got in trouble and the chips were down, who did you call on? It wasn't me, Jack. It was humongous. You didn't call on me. Jim Neidhart has never been on a second string team. Hey, I've never played second fiddle for anybody, baby. And you've really sorrowed me very, very much. Listen, when I played with the Dallas Cowboys, I was smarter than the Dallas Cowboy coaches. When I played with the Raiders, I was smarter than the Oakland Raider coaches. When I was on the UCLA track team, I was smarter than the UCLA track and field coaches. And I'm smarter than you, chump. And I'll take that from anybody. I got a little surprise for you, baby. I'm not with the first family anymore. The first family is dead, baby. Because I'm going to start something myself. And call it the Nightheart Raiders, baby. The Nightheart Raiders. And at killer position, number one, baby. Humongous. <laughs> How about that, chump? Humongous, baby! Humongous! And a fullback, the man with a big punch, Ox Baker. Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! I like it! Hit the road! <laughs> yeah, and for speed and a journey, the PYT Express! How about that? Yeah, baby! And at right tackle! There we go. Come on! God damn it! The family's dead, baby! It's Night on Raiders! Come on, PYT! Yeah, baby! Yeah, hey! I'm not gonna sit in the sidelines like you, chump. Hey, I'm in the action. I'm like General Patton. No sideline for me. I'm right there in the center! <laughs> hey, and at right tackle! How about a Zambui team, baby? The heavyweight! Come on, baby! Yeah, yeah, baby! Look at the weight! Where's the brother, Benny? Yeah, gaining weight! He's back there in weight! He's down on the beach, he's good, gaining weight! He's yeah, up. baby! We're heavy! And in the promotional department, the man with all the pizzazz, ravishing Broadway, Rick Rude! And then, yeah, baby, yeah. And then, and then of Nightheart's Raiderette cheerleaders, Angel. Hey, I want a big hand right here. Big hand in the middle. Ready? Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, yeah baby. Yeah. How about that, Chuck? For the PYT Express, gave them their name, Ox Baker. Ox Baker, I'm glad to be here, made a legend out of him. Look at Rick Rude, he was nothing before I brought him in Hit here. the road. Here. You ain't never give us our name. We give our whole stuff our name. And you gotta hear all these people cheer you like they just did over here. Hey, the family is dead. The family is dead. It's Nightheart's Raiders. 
just road warrior him out. You're going with him too? Is that the picture, man, that's painted to me now? All of y'all are leaving me by myself. Hey, you got eyes, chump, can't you see? It's Nighthawk Raiders, baby. The family is dead. You're gone. Your history. They don't teach you to put the apple in the background, chump. Still the greatest day of your life? <laughs> yeah, baby. What a team! Right what a team! Right Jimmy Hart. Watching his family all line up behind Jim Neidhart. And now he, every, they're all there. Uh, the, the former family now known as Neidhart's Raiders, according to, uh, to Jim Neidhart. And uh, Jimmy Hart, you heard him say there, I think. Right now he doesn't have any comment. Wow. <laughs> well, I get well. It was supposed to be uh, some of the first family members in here right now, uh, set to go with uh, with eight man tag team match. But I guess they're now Nightheart Raider members that'll be coming back in here, and we are just about set to go with uh, the eight man tag team action. So if uh, if Coach Nightheart uh, wants to to get him back in here, we will uh, we will get this one underway. It's going to be Austin Idol, Dutch Mantel, Harley Davidson, and Dirty Rhodes on one side of the ring. And uh, Neidhart himself is uh, in this match, along with uh, Humongous and the PYT Express. <laughs> Referee, Dutch Mantel, Harley Davidson, making their way to the ring right now. There comes the universal heartthrob, Dirty Rhodes. <laughs> Harley Davidson uh, coming around. All right, Harley with a word or two. Let me say something, baby. <laughs> My baby told me, she said, honey, this is your lucky day, and this show is, you know, Jimmy Nothart's gonna be out here. Yes, he is. Somebody said, he can't avoid me now, you understand. He's got a big mouth, a big old square box head, but he can't avoid me, baby. This is gonna be it right here. I want all the people to see it right here, me and Jimmy Nothart. My boys are gonna take care of the other ones, baby, and me and Nothart. All right, Harley Davidson, he's looking for Nothart in this particular match. Uh, there you see Dirty Rhodes as uh, Harley's Regular tag team partner standing here. And Neidhart is yet to uh, to bring him into the ring. Referee Junkyard Dog. That is the action that is coming up Monday night at the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum. Jimmy Hart, I don't know if you heard, Eddie Marlin has just added a stipulation, loser leave town match with you and, and Thomas Marlin. You know, I wasn't going to talk about this match, but let me tell you what, I was sitting in the back and I saw Eddie Marlin come out here, baby, and say it's going to be a loser leave town match with Jimmy Hart. You know what, I, I just, you know what, I, it just dawned on me what's really happening here today. You know what it is? It's Jerry Lawler and Eddie Marlin have finally gotten together and say we know how to get rid of Hart. You know, I knew it couldn't be that stupid idiot Night Hart thinking of something as clever as trying to steal the family from Jimmy Hart. Well, let me tell you something, Lawler, and let me tell you something, Eddie Marlin. I know it was very humiliating for you to lay down in the middle of that ring last week there and get pinned by me, Jimmy Hart. And I know it's the worst thing that ever happened to you. And it hurt Lawler's ego, too, to see me pin you, baby. Well, let me tell you something. I always keep something up my sleeve, and I promise you this. Thomas Marlin, after Monday night, he'll never want to show his face back in this area again. And that is a promise from me to you. The loser lead town match with Hart against Thomas Marlin coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Speaking of Coliseum action, uh, Match between the King, Jerry Lawler, and the big humongous. Let's take a look at some of that action. <laughs> Whoa, look at him! Pitches Lawler in. Misses that close line. Lawler with a drop kick. Shoots an elbow. He's going now. Give a little more vulnerable to that right hand. 
Jimmy into the top turnbuckle. Lawler bounces Hart down in the middle of the ring. He's lost it at 840. Slams Hart. The referee says, no, sir, you were disqualified for using a pile driver. Lawler, he's referee Jerry Calhoun over the top rope. Now he goes back after Humongous, but he has been disqualified. Jerry was dead. Jerry, you were disqualified. He grabs the belt and starts out of here. Okay, the disqualification, but Lawler will get another shot at uh, Humongous. Here it comes right now. Let's talk to him a little bit about it. The King. Jerry Lawler. Okay, you know, there was a lot of frustration, but also some satisfaction from that. Oh, a lot of satisfaction. You know, I feel real good today. This looks like it might be the greatest day of my life because, you see, everybody is finally wising up. Everybody's turning their back on Hart, and I love it. He's standing out here. He don't know what's happening to him. Now Eddie Marlin's made it a loser leave town. Do you people realize that this may be the last time that we have to look at that little skinny wimp, Jimmy Hart, for good? Would that be right or not, huh? I love it. You know what? I ought to take that humongous out and buy him a steak dinner, too, because you see, he finally, he was the man that opened my eyes, and I feel, like I said, I feel so good today. He finally hit me hard enough, and he finally hit me long enough, and he finally hit me so many times that I wised up. You see, I get tired, and for the last few weeks, I've been having people saying, well, what's happened, King? Is it finally over? Did you finally meet your match? Oh, ye of little faith, let me promise you. The king will never meet his match, brother. From now on, if you want to see me lick, they're going to have to put my picture on a postage stamp because, brother, I'm making you a promise right now, a rededication to the king's career. I'm going to kick some butts. Anybody that gets in my way, anytime, any place, brother, the king is here, and I'm here to stay. I'm going to put some hurting on some people, and I'm going to start it right down there Monday night at the Coliseum with this jerk ox baker and with humongous because, brother, I am bringing in a man that is going to do a little number. You see, Hart paid a $1,000 fine, and Eddie Marlin knew he was going to have to pay it, so he took that $1,000, and he put a couple more thousand with it, and he brought me in a partner that I've been looking forward to for a long, long time. Now, you people haven't seen him here, but I'm sure you've seen him on national TV. You've seen him in the magazines, and we're going to take a look at him right now on tape. I'm talking about the junkyard dog, brother, and he's going to be a heck of a partner. need a dog so they bring him in the dog baby every cat needs a dog and i'm gonna have the dog with me monday night ox baker and humongous you're big and you're bad but you will be had that's a promise baby all right very good the junkyard dog will be here to be the partner with the king jerry lawler monday night and they will be going against humongous and big ox baker of course will be the partner of Humongous. We've got second fall action coming up here of uh, Championship Wrestling, that eight-man tag team match. Either the, uh, what used to be the first family or the uh, the Nightheart Raiders right now be coming back. Now, wait a minute, here comes, uh, here comes Ox Baker with Humongous right now. And uh, Ox, did you see uh, the King's partner, Junkyard Dog, coming well, first out? First of all, I want to tell you something. That match, Monday Night Heart, will not be with us. We got the night on Raiders, me and Humongous, and I want to tell you another thing. Jerry Lau, you tried to break this man's neck the other night. You tried to break my leg, but you did one thing wrong. You didn't break his neck, and you didn't break my leg. And now you're talking about this junk hose dog bringing 10 or 15 truckloads of people that come down and watch beat me and Humongous up. Well, I'm going to teach you a word Monday night. 
And everybody in Memphis is going to learn that word. It's called humiliation. Because we're going to humiliate you. We're going to make you look so bad, you're going to have to walk back wherever you come, Junk House dog. And you talked about Among Us hitting you. I haven't you hit you yet, Jerry Law. And if I hit you, and I'm going to hit you, if I hit you and you fall down and you don't get back up, the old saying is, too bad. Ox Baker, he and Humongous will uh, be going against Lawler and the Junkyard Dog. We have to take time out. We'll be back with more of championship wrestling for you. Stay with us. Remind you, if you have sent for tickets to Championship Wrestling, they are free. If you've enclosed a self-addressed stamped envelope, your tickets will be sent back to you. But there is a long waiting period, four months or so. So please be patient with us. We're looking forward to seeing you here, just like some of these Cubs you see right here. The Cub Scout Pack 112 out of Marble, Arkansas. Glad to have them with us here today. All right, we'll be back into uh, eight-man tag team action here in a couple of minutes. First, though, I want to show you some highlights of a match. Some kind of match, too, which occurred between the Macho Man, Randy Savage, and the Universal Heartthrob, Austin Idol. Here's some highlights of that match. All right, here he comes right now, the Universal Heartthrob, Austin Idol. And Austin, you did get pinned in that one. You know, Dave, there's an old saying, and the saying goes something like this. How much rice can a Chinaman eat before, before, if he get, before he gets full? I may be stammering a little bit, but it's because I'm excited. I'm excited about a lot of things, darling. You see, what's happening around here, and I'm talking about Dury Lawler. I'm talking about Harley Davidson. I'm talking about Dirty Roots, Scott Shannon. But most of all, I'm talking about me, baby. I've had enough. And you know, the other day, I heard Lance just say on that tape, he said, Austin Isle was trying to get a little satisfaction. Well, years ago, Mick Jagger, the Rolling Stones, says, I can't get no satisfaction. Well, darling, I did because, see, I'm getting tired of getting ripped off. I'm getting tired of getting burnt. And it's something we all got in common. It don't make any difference if you go to the grocery store or the gas station, if you go down to buy a shirt and a pair of pants, everybody seems to be getting ripped off. And I've drawn the line right here. I ain't going to get ripped off no more. And the only thing I regret is because I was in a little bit of a hurry. I didn't really get to get that leg above the knee. I didn't really get the pressure point where I wanted. Otherwise, we wouldn't see no Angelo Poffo around here ever again. Now, I don't know if the leg is broken. I don't know if the ligaments are torn. But we don't see no Poffo. We don't see no macho man. We don't have to see none of the big bad dudes. Well, darling, you can tell everybody about how bad you are. But also now, you see, I can walk down Central Park in New York City with a whole pack of $100 bills, darling, sticking right out of the back of my pants, and nobody dare touch one of them. Now, Monday night, Jack, it's international heavyweight title rematch again. And I'm telling you, and this is the bold-faced truth, baby, you can take this to the bank. I'm going to get my belt back if I have to break your leg to do it, Savage. Monday night, this ain't no gaga, darling. International titles on the line. We've got some comments from Randy Savage about the same match. Let's take a listen to him right now. You see what you did to my dad? You see what you did to my dad, Austin Idol? And you know why, man? Just because of jealousy, man. Just jealousy. Because I got this, and you don't. Do you understand, man? You understand, and you ain't never going to get this. You ain't never going to get this. You see what you did? You see what you did? You don't think there's going to be any payback about it, man. You don't understand us, no. You don't understand our family, man. You don't understand. You know what a vendetta means? You know what a vendetta means? Go ask somebody that speaks Italian, and they'll tell you what a vendetta means. Austin Idol, man, I wouldn't want to be you right now. I wouldn't want to be you, because you're in a lot of trouble, and I got no idea how you're going to get out of it. No, no idea at all, because you're through, man. You're going to be eliminated. You did it out of jealousy, and jealousy is what's going to kill you. It's going to kill you, man. It's going to kill you. Everybody's going to find out that we fight best when our opponents are the deadliest. Bring your baseball bat. You don't understand how bad a trouble you're in right now. But I'm going to explain it because this is a violent sport. This is professional wrestling, man. And we've been in it all our lives. And the family, yeah, the family, man. A family within a family, Jimmy Hart. 
know what you mean, baby, but they don't know what we mean. You don't know what the word vendetta means, man. And I'll tell you something about the Popple family. A lot of people say that we don't forget, and I guarantee you, man, even if you think we do, we don't. No, we don't. Austin Idol, man, you're in a lot of trouble. You did this to my dad, but you're in a lot of trouble, man, just because you're jealous. People call you the idol, man. They worship you, man, but they're worshiping the dead man. Yeah, they are. They're worshiping a dead man, and you'll never get this. And what's worse, man, you're going to get hurt real, real, real bad. Violent sport, yeah, we love it, man, and you're a much man. You've heard from both of them, Austin Idol, Randy Savage. They'll settle it in the ring for the international title Monday night. Coming up tonight, championship wrestling up in Ripley. Qualification on Jim Neidhart in the second fall. One fall apiece, and what used to be the first family, now Neidhart's Raiders out here waiting for their opponents. Neidhart put uh, the pile driver on uh, dirty roads, and promoter Eddie Marlin has told me that dirty roads will not be able to continue. So it is going to be four against three for this fall. Now, wait a minute, maybe it isn't. Here comes Jerry Lawler out here. Lawler. Whoa. I saw fire in Humongous's face. And there's action everywhere, but it is unofficial. The bell is not sounded. Time is beginning to run short here. I don't even know if we're going to have time to get an official start in this match. Lawler stepped in as kind of a last-minute uh, partner for the team of Austin Idol. Harley Davidson and Dutch Mantel. The fire flew. Humongous has left. There goes Stagger Lee into the folding metal chair held by Austin Idol, PYT, and Jim Neidhart leaving the area here. There they go. We got to take a break. Back in just a moment. Hey, the action that we had here today, here's kind of a little uh, quick recap on it. Scott Shannon against Rick Rude. Rick Rude won that match in a little over two minutes. And then in the eight-man tag team match, it was Neidhart, Humongous, and PYT winning one fall. Idol, Mantell, Harley Davidson, and Dirty Rhodes winning another. One fall apiece is the way that one went. We tried to start the third fall of action, but before it actually got started, Dirty Rhodes had been hurt uh, with a pile driver by Neidhart in that second fall. And uh, before the, we could uh, get the third fall underway, the King, Jerry Lawler, came in as a last-minute substitution for Dirty Roads in that fall. Uh, I saw fire fly. I didn't see exactly what was happening, but I saw the fire go in Humongous's face. Humongous left the area. There was uh, a free-for-all going on with uh, all of them in there, and the bell never sounded for uh, officially for the third fall. So this one is going to go into the record books as a draw. One fall apiece. Uh, the third fall is ruled as no fall. That's the way it was on Championship Wrestling Today. Again, Lance Russell has uh, been taking the day off, a little vacation. He will be back with us next week. Hope you'll be back with us next week, too. Until then, this is Dave Brown. So long, everybody. You know?